I guess I'll start and uh, I'll preface by saying that I sort of have a reputation around the lab as being a tough guy, former football player and bouncer for seven years. I'm very loud and aggressive and I have that reputation, but that uh, reputation might be completely destroyed in the next five minutes. Uh, also to save time and to really uh, try to prevent myself from losing it, uh, I'm going to do something that is going to cause Lynn's ashes to spin in their water columns by just reading uh, my speech directly off of a piece of paper. So Lynn, I apologize in advance. Lynn Margulis, teacher, inspiration, and friend. Uh, I met Lynn in the fall of 2003, like many of us, as a student in our life-changing environmental evolution course, a course I've had the privilege of TAing uh, since 2007, with the exception of a year following my graduation with my master's degree when I had a really failed attempt at the real world, which just ended in no inspiring job offers, two stints on fish tour, and uh, two torn ligaments in my knee that caused me to be immobile for three months. Uh, to say I came crawling back to the lab for a PhD was actually quite accurate. <laughs> uh, lucky for me, Lynn was more than eager uh, to lovingly accept me back to refine my skills and uh, try the real world again. I'm not sure how true it is, but Lynn used to say that I was the first student of hers who claimed environmental evolution as a field and not just a class on Wednesday nights. That just came intrinsically to me. Uh, the first semester with Lynn, taking her class with at least two members of the audience right now, my wife Lee and Kendra Clark, who just defended a great thesis on foraminifera and biostratigraphy. Um, that semester blew my mind. And I think I can speak for Kendra and Lee and the entire room uh, when I say that. Uh, I always felt I had accomplished a dream of mine, becoming a TA in her signature class. Something as a student in her class, I used to look at Micah Dunthorne and say, wow, like how cool is this dude? Uh, I wasn't exactly the best undergraduate student. Uh, that's a, a ridiculous understatement. In fact, I said wasn't exactly the best would probably be complimenting my uh, undergraduate approach to school. This department, the geosciences department, specifically Mark Lecky, who's in the back, uh, Richard Yuritich, Rob DeCanto, and Don Wise were able to inspire me enough to take geology seriously and start looking into those uh, other related fields. Uh, but it was Lynn who blew me away. Uh, to describe the scenario more accurately, I, I pictured Don and Mark and DeCanto and Wise, sorry, uh, Yuritich, taking a hammer and a chisel and like cracking open the front of my skull so that information could seep in more quickly. <laughs> when I met Lynn, she grabbed my skull with both her hands and ripped it completely open. Uh, I was clueless before I met Lynn. I'll repeat that. I was clueless before I met Lynn. I walked into Lynn's class thinking that bacteria only made us sick. I left Glenn's class thinking that I should probably seek the advice of the nearest cyanobacterium anytime I had a question regarding any aspect of Earth history. My initial introduction to Lynn was a pretty common story, but my introduction to the Margulis, Margulis lab was a much funnier one. I was walking the halls of this uh, building, in fact it was right outside this room, a mere five weeks after graduating from her environmental evolution course. Uh, looking for about 10 hours of work, student uh, employment, to uh, complement my nightly gas attendant job that Lynn thankfully rescued me from, which is the source of my rent money. And upon turning the corner right out here, I was slammed into by who other than the great rule-breaking, wrong side of the hallway walking, feet scuffing, head buried in a paper with her nose two inches from the paper so that she couldn't see anything anyway, Lynn Margulis. This woman who couldn't have been any taller than six inches shorter than me and had to be less than 50% of my mass crashed into me like a tiny meteorite into the earth. <laughs> Lynn, my God, I said, are you okay? <laughs> Without skipping a beat, she looked at me as if she didn't just slam into something twice her size and said, do you need a job? <laughs> I said, yeah, actually, I was here just, and she grabbed my wrist, 
And I couldn't even finish saying yes, or whatever was about to come out of my mouth, as far as Lynn was concerned, for that matter, before my wrist was immediately shackled by the marvelous handcuff and dragged to the third floor. This is Celeste, she said, and the rest is history. I suppose, although maybe a bit comical, that my shackle metaphor is inappropriate. To say so might imply that I was imprisoned, that I was held against my will. Nothing could be further from the truth. It turned out to be the second most important moment of my life, up to that point. Uh, second only to being adopted at the age of four. If my parents adopted me literally, then Lynn certainly adopted me academically. And as a geologist, please don't take offense, this is my personality screaming. And as a geologist, I can say this with as much confidence as I can say anything. I'll put my eight years of dinner conversations against any of your undergraduate biology degrees <laughs> any day of the week. Lynn had this effect on people. She demanded so much of us and taught us so much, you couldn't help but be confident. How could you not be? Look at this woman. Look what she had to deal with. What could she have to stand up to from the time she was a young woman right until the time that she died? When Lynn went through as a scientist, what she went through as a scientist, especially a female scientist, in an era totally, not just mostly, dominated by white men, her words, was perpetuated in her teaching style, in her approach to science, in her approach to life. Mark McMenamin, the well-known geologist and professor at Mount Holyoke College right down the street here, once said to me at one of our semesterly trips at Harvard Forest, if Lynn were a Russian evolutionist, she'd be on their money, and she can't even get funded here. <laughs> To be around that every day for years was to learn a lesson that no textbook could scratch the surface of. And for that, we will all be forever indebted to Lynn. Lynn taught us that we are nothing without bacteria, the organisms we break our backs to kill and or enslave. Lynn constantly reminded us that humans are the most untrustworthy of all the animals and that they should be approached with caution. <laughs> and Lynn constantly repeated David Bohm's famous reminder, Science is the search for the truth, whether we like that or not. To any outsider, here's my second personality coming out, to any outsider under the impression that Lynn, at any point in her esteemed career, betrayed this motto, I have this to say. She was right, you just don't realize it yet. <laughs> I don't really have to get into how much Lynn really meant to me or to us. Uh, this has been made clear this weekend. What you may not know is that if it were not for Lynn, I would not be here right now, and I'm sure that's a common theme throughout the room. I'll end with this one last quick story, another one that exemplifies Lynn, at least in my mind. Lynn might have been very quick to point out your areas of deficiency by telling you what you needed to read or, but, or what you had to be familiar with before you could even get into the details, but she was just as quick to point out your strengths and what she liked about you and your approach. She could be brutally honest, uh, sometimes to a fault, sometimes obliviously. But her frankness and bluntness were the two of the things that I loved the most about her, probably because I have the same, in parentheses, sometimes obnoxious traits. <laughs> After one of our many graduate seminars had ended, already years deep in my graduate research on Moroccan microbialites, Lynn complimented me in an empty classroom. That was a great talk, Sean. You're a natural teacher. Thanks a lot, Lynn. I appreciate that. I'm serious, you're gonna make a great teacher someday, and maybe even a scientist. <laughs> if I ever do become a scientist, one that views the natural world objectively and conveys it to the public as intended, it'll be because I learned from Lynn. I studied her techniques, I read her books, I combed through her papers, I stood over her shoulder when she peered through microscopes, I watched as she eagerly scanned bizarre Moroccan rocks with her eyes from three millimeters away, and I stood in amazement as she battled the fallacy of misplaced concreteness. I witnessed her network and made connections no other person seemed capable of making. Getting science done, as she called it. If I ever become a great teacher, it'll be because of a function of the lessons I learned from Lynn, but nothing specific. I learned by simply watching Lynn be Lynn. And boy, did we love her for that. Thank you.
Okay, so I am actually an early late to mid Menina. <laughs> um, <laughs> and just speaking of her, I was talking to Andre earlier this morning. I always wondered why Lynn was so busy and she always had a dog and she always made everybody take care of her dog. <laughs> and I was like, why would she have this dog? But I, I get it. It was like a way of keeping everybody at the house connected and like a common denominator for all of us. So I'm sorry, it's going to be hard to get through this. Um, so whether it was her science or, you know, commotion dinners or the lab, there was always something to keep us connected. So, so anyway. I really struggled with what I was going to say today. You know, friends told me to do a little anecdote or what she did to, for me and meant for me as a mentor um, and my friend. Gary, my husband, told me just to write from the heart. And, sorry, my heart is still broken and that's why I think it's so hard. So anyway, when people ask me what Lynn is like, I simply say she was amazing in every sense of the word. She was amazingly brilliant, determined, exasperating, and kind and wonderful. She was in my life at the right time. I was working on my master's. I had just met the man I was going to eventually marry, and I was going to have a baby. And being with Lynn at this time was special because I felt she could truly understand what I was going through, wanting to do science and to have a family. And I thought because of this, she was going to offer me some great advice of how I was going to do it all, and I was going to be great at it and wonderful at it like she would always tell me but to my dismay she told me Kendra it's not possible to be a first-class scientist a good wife and a mother something has to go <laughs> so <laughs> so amazing and I hope that Gary isn't here yet <laughs> so I won't <laughs> I won't go on about all the things that she did for me or the ways that she maybe exasperated me or the regrets that I might have. Um, but what I want to say is throughout this whole event, I've realized, you know, what struck me the most is not what she did for me, but what she did for everybody. And the amazing thing that I actually felt special <laughs> and that everybody felt that way around her. Um, so she was definitely consistent <laughs> with the love and her determination and of people and their ideas. So I would dare to say that Lynn and I had some things in common. We were both the oldest children of all of our siblings. We were both Pisces with our day, birthdays just a couple days apart. Um, although I can appreciate classical music, I more shared her love for the opera. I didn't know a lot about spirochetes, but we both loved foramps. And I thought the tea that she drank smelled like cigarette ashes, <laughs> but she was always good to share a beer with. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we both, um, because I'm clearly not an eloquent speaker, uh, we both liked the writer Anne McEwen, and if you've never read any of his books, she loved him and they're fabulous. And so I'm just going to read a quick quote by Anne that made me think of Lynn. And now she was back in the world, not one she could make, but the one that had made her, and she felt herself shrinking under the early evening sky. She was wary of being outdoors, but she was not ready to go in. Was that really all there was in life, indoors or out? Wasn't there somewhere else for people to go? So Lynn, wherever you are, I thank you immensely. <laughs>